let's talk about Star Tours. Now, I rode the original Star Tours in Disneyland long before I ever even saw a Star Wars movie, so I have just as much nostalgia for it as I do for the original trilogy. Yeah, it was kinda slapstick, but it was funnier than most recent attempts at humor in the Star Wars universe. I loved every detail, even in the queue, from the bickering of 3PO and R2 to the silhouette of 2-1B repairing wrecks between the flights. Everything about the ride was so delightfully 80s, hearkening back to a Star Wars before this, 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 this and when enough time had passed to heal the scars from this. In my original cut of the episode, the only thing I really had to say was the Disneyland version, you're at a spaceport in Tomorrowland and you're about to take a trip to Endor. The Disney World version here, we're clearly already on Endor. But of course, in the time since I shot that, Disney and Lucas did what they do best, change things that were already fine. Yes, folks, this is now Star Tours 2, The Adventures Continue, which of course is set long before the events of the original Star Tours, because that's what the word continue means. The new version is in 3D, with a randomized on-ride film that takes you to a variety of locations from the prequels as well as the original trilogy. And let me tell you, they replaced my first Star Wars film experience, the ride that went a long way into shaping me into the geek I am today, with this new ride that is actually really, really good. I'm sorry, I know you want another pirate-style rant, but the new Star Tours is excellent. In fact, I hate to say this because I prefer to be blinded by nostalgia at all costs, but this ride is not only a better Star Wars experience than the original, it's a better ride altogether. The effects are better, the motion is better, the variety of ride experiences is better. Sure, it's not flawless. It doesn't make much sense how each location features the exact technology and the exact condition we saw from that location in the movies, even though we saw them all decades apart in the movies. Uh, unless we're traveling through time, and this ride is also trying to fill the void left by Universal closing back to the future. It also doesn't make much sense why Yoda is apparently out of isolation and working with the Rebel Alliance at the same time as Leia and Akbar. And this window that once contained my favorite easter egg now just contains characters walking around aimlessly, and I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be a window to. A lobby? A lounge? An employee section? Slave quarters? I don't know. But then there was a lot in the original Star Tours that didn't make much sense. Like exactly what time frame it took place in that allowed the Death Star to be there or why 3PO and R2 were working at an airline during said time frame. This version at least justifies that by mentioning Captain Antilles lent them to Star Tours, hinting that their role is part of a spy smuggling operation. And you may be the spy! That's right, audience participation! One passenger is chosen at random to be the rebel spy. You don't actually have to do anything, they just show your picture and make you feel obligated to buy a t-shirt. But can you imagine being a kid chosen to be the spy? That's why I say this is a better Star Wars experience than the original. While the original just had you near Star Wars events as a witness like the first Pink 5 film, this puts you into the Star Wars events like the later Pink 5 films. You're no longer just innocent bystanders, you're the main characters in the story. And having 3PO as the pilot instead of some random droid kids don't even know yet makes it feel that much more Star Wars-y. And there's still plenty of references to the classic ride, including an appearance in the queue of some defective Rexes, whose malfunctions cause him to spout some familiar catchphrases. This is crack. But while we don't get any new Paul Rubens dialogue, we do get Patrick Warburton and Allison Janney. And... is that John Ratzenberger? I'm seriously asking, the only info I can find on the internet is other people asking the same question. Man, that's obscure fan service that they really put Brenderlin in the ride. I really hope you had to look that character's name up. Uh, yeah, that's right. I looked it up. I did not just know Cliff Clavin's Star Wars name off the top of my head. I almost feel bad mocking you. There's a lot of great jokes in the queue, including inside jokes for Star Wars fans and for Disney fans. Don't rather annoy you. Don't just jump up. All of you. I really like this gag where the oblivious baggage check droid is supposed to stop droid smuggling and, well, doesn't. The attention to detail is spectacular, and the ride contains the very best 3D I've ever seen. Sure, the graphics look more like a video game than a movie, and it's missing the charm of the original scale models, but the depth is incredible. Now, I still miss the original Star Tours. It was a vital part of my childhood, and I kind of hope they roll it back out for a special occasion or two like they did with Captain EO. 
Come on, with so many ships, you could let one of them have the old ride film. But when you take off the nostalgia goggles, this ride is a worthy successor. And when was the last time you said that about a Lucas update? We hope you enjoyed your fight, and we look forward to seeing you again soon! Goodbye!